Hello, this is Mr. Frasia, and I am here to work through and show you some navigation on Florida Virtual School so that it clarifies this for many parents because the navigation video I sent you apparently is dated. So I'm going to take you step through step on how to navigate through this, as, even as far as showing you exactly how to log in. So we will start with some basics. One being right to the beginning. So pull this up and I'm going to open up a new thing. Blackboard Collaborate is something that you're going to want to keep on the computer. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. FLVS.net. All right, we go to login. We're going to do uh, county virtual. Okay, and we're going to use and password is all right. And now that I've logged in, you will see up here in the right-hand corner your child's email. This is something they should check every day. Uh, there's emails that come in all the time from other students, from their teachers, uh, about collaboration, and we'll talk about that later. The second thing is making sure that they have both segment one and segment two. Okay segment one and segment two. If they don't see both those segments there, please make sure you go to this corner, top left, click on it. All right, request a new course. Okay, and when you request a new course, you will see, um, you'll go back in and pick the segment you do not have. All right, so the email in this part is really important because the email is kept here. It sends notifications that you have email, but the email is here. Parents, yours is the same concept. Your email is here, even though uh, you gave them your email address. Okay, it's for internet safety. All right, so now we're gonna enter the course. So as I click on it and we get into the course, you shall see over here, they have other emails. Now these are emails that their teacher may have graded something and sent them back. That's for those emails. You'll see over here on the far left are the lessons, assessments, homepage, and then a main menu that has everything that we've just talked about again. So you can see it there as well as lessons, assessments. Notice, lessons first, because that's what they should be doing, then assessments. So let's click on this, Pinellas, and you can see, well, that one's I'm not worried about. Okay. So here we go, homepage. All three teachers have the same formatted homepage. New student. So these are virtual hints, what to do, where to find stuff. Please make sure you read these all carefully at another time. Uh, Blackboard Collaborate is something you need to download to your computer so that it will be assisting you in other pieces of this class. Okay, DBAs. This goes through some of the stuff that you will have to do before every test, okay, before every test, module test. Even though they say exams, they're not all exams, okay? That's just the nomenclature they use or how they name it. It's only when they say test. So at the end of every module is a test and the DBA comes before that. Next, collaboration assignments. You gotta do one per segment one per segment. They give you several opportunities to do them. You only have to do one, okay? Plus your teachers will give you opportunities to do them. Right here, your teachers may do live lessons to meet this requirement. So even if you went through and did all this individual assignments, you can still get your collaborations from your teachers and assignments that they do on Blackboard Collaborate. So please do not stress over it. Just complete what you can, and if you choose to do it, it's your choice, all right? but you do have to do one. There are other opportunities to do them. Okay, and last but not least, the 14-day grace period. It starts 
once your child um, is activated. And they won't be activated until the Monday after we have our welcome call. So we've been doing group welcome calls, and it'll be that Monday. All right, so let me get out of this. And we're back to this home page. That was up where it said new student. Okay, if you would like to see prior recordings, it says Blackboard Recordings. You click on it, it gives you a list of things that we have done online. And you may click on the, one of the last couple if you would like to hear our welcome uh, group welcome call. Okay, next. These times, these are evening hours that we have. We all have different evening hours. I try to do at least one hour in the evening per class. I will tell you that these may change. They may not always stay the same, but you can use this as a guideline of when you can call me to do a DBA at night. If you have the ability to do it at your school, I don't care if you call me during school hours, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm here all day from 8.30 to 3.30. And then as you can see, I have some office hours in the evening as well. All right, so please shoot me a text. Whatever you wish to do, that sounds fantastic. Okay, and then here we have a pacing guide. You click it, there's what we should be doing by the weeks. Okay, so a nice little list for you to print out, you have. You wanna do the group welcome call, and you need to, or you need help tutoring, and you want, your teacher goes, go to my classroom. That's this button here, you click virtual classroom. Make sure you put in your first and last name, and it will take you to that web page. So I'm just gonna make, I'm just putting my initials for right now. And it downloads the meeting here. You click on it and it will open it up. So we'll wait a second so that you can see what that looks like. So as it opens up the meeting, it's gonna verify you have Blackboard Collaborate. This is available on your phones as well, some of you. The problem is it's a little bit harder to do the interactive stuff on your phone. All you can do is respond to polling questions. You know, when a teacher asks you, click yes or no or whatever. So here we are, verifying, and then it should open it up, or it's going to give me a cue to run. If your child currently does ST Math at home, uh, they should have the Java application that this runs with already loaded on your computer, and you'll know what I'm talking about. So we pick cable or DSL, and then you'll see that I pop into the welcome room. Da da da. This is what we're using for this evening's welcome call. So uh, just as a sample so that you know what's going on. All right, so now I'm gonna click out of that. And I'm gonna go back to the classroom and click out a couple of these things. All righty, so here we are in the classroom and understanding that this is our class. So we go to lessons. And when we click on lessons, I'm hoping everybody reads the getting started. There are several slides here. So here we go. There's one, two. And I'm just going to keep clicking the next page so that you can see there's instructions on what to do, interactive instructions, how to navigate, how to find things. So the ability to do this has been here. It's just rough because some kids read it and some do not. I would stress reading things in order so that you do not miss stuff because there's a lot of information here and I'm only going through this briefly. Submitting your work, what practice tests are, where they're located. Some of these have practice tests that are interactive inside of the program. It tells you what you can do and what you can't do, okay? Some of them include questions from the lesson, so that's why it's important to read this. Then it gives you what the icons mean, caution, this is a big one. Make sure you're paying attention so that you don't make mistakes. Okay, and then we keep going. Types of assessments. It explains how you're going to see them and what that looks like. How do you type up math problems? They show you how to type up math problems. What does multiplication look like? What does an exponent look like? What does a fraction look like? All right. And then it goes through other types of assessments. So here's the interactive one, and it tells you where these are going to be. And be careful, because they're in the lesson and not in your assessments. So even though they look like they're in your assessments, if you click on them, you're not going to see any of the pictures. You're not going to see anything. They're in the actual lessons, not the assessments. All right? And then it talks about collaboration. It gives you a button you can click on, and it gives you details of what collaboration is. All right? Everything that's got a hyperlink to it, I'd click on it and read it. 
it's really important to understand what's going on. We keep going a little grit. When things get tough, it's okay, but you'll be able to do it. Two, making sure you give yourself plenty of time. Three, tips for learning. Keep in touch with us. Keep your work in a folder. Pace. We've showed you where the pacing guide is. And then the next lesson is on academic integrity. So there's a whole video on, um, they call it academic integrity or honesty, making sure that you're doing things yourself. The big thing is you want to avoid cutting and pasting stuff because when you cut and paste stuff, we use a program called Turnitin and it will at times give you a false positive that you have been getting your information from somewhere other than yourself. So don't cut, cut and paste. We just need the answers. So just type up your answers. All right. So here's some major integrity stuff that you want to make sure you're doing. And then we're done. And we can start lesson one. So lesson one, every lesson has a module checklist. You click on it, and it gives you an overview of what you're going to see. Read this carefully, because there are times that it has important information, like this. There's a collaboration opportunity, and they tell you where it is and what that entails. Click the next page. It tells you caution. What happens when you get locked out of a pretest? What you can do to get locked out of a pretest? All right, so understanding that they give you what happens to get locked out, and you want to make sure that you have time to finish stuff. Okay, then they tell you in the assessment area, go to module one one and complete the pretest. It's auto graded, and you'll get immediate feedback. Okay, then it takes you to one one. First lesson, interactive. Do it. Okay, we go page by page. Remember, there's a bunch of stuff to practice on page by page lots of stuff to practice on need more practice then we get to the end vocabulary summary of what we did and then it tells me you did it you've reached it now go to the assessments assessments and do one one as you do stuff it will disappear from the assessments tab so this will disappear after you do it. This will disappear after you do it. They haven't disappeared. They've just been graded. The collaboration is going to be there until you actually do it. It's not the first thing you have to do. It's something you have to do in segment one. That's why it's called segment one collaboration. All right. So we go through that whole list. Let's say I need to see what that stuff is. So I click on gradebook. When I go to the gradebook, I'm going to see my name, where I'm at, and all the things that have been graded. This is where I can reset assignments in case I didn't like the score I had and I want to do it again. Okay, so that means you'd click on it. It would take you to the assignment. And while you're in that assignment, it will say, do you want to reset it? Now, the problem is, is this one's never been done. So I can't reset something I haven't done yet. And when you finish an assessment at the bottom, it says check that box that you're ready to submit. You submit it, and then it will allow you to reset it up at the top if you happen to do poorly on it. Right up here, it'll say, do you want to reset? You type in, didn't like my grade, whatever you want to type in. All right, so going through the lessons and understanding that as you go through each lesson, it is very explicit on how you do stuff. And at the end, it tells you where to submit it. Don't skip these lessons. Okay, so now as we're going down here, we start getting to the practice test. I'm going to show you something. On the practice test, here are all those sample notes you could print out if you wish. Click, there's the notes. Da da da. Print them out, copy them down however you wish to do it. And now you could use those notes in the lesson if you wanted to. Those notes are in the lesson as well. So now I'm going to click home page and go to one of the lessons and show you that the notes are there as well. So there's one, and we're going to go to one one. There we are. And I'm going to go to page six. So here we go. And guess what? There are the notes. I click it. They're the same notes. They're just in two different spots so that they're at the end of the lesson so you can print them out. They're the same. That's right here. These are the same notes. But they make it so that you can print them out. All righty? And they're all in one spot. You can print them out before you do the assessment. It is completely up to you how you do this. But notes are allowed to be used. You can use them for DBAs. You can use them for all sorts of stuff. So please make sure that you are reading carefully. So some people have asked, well, what's a DBA? So I gave you an example of what a DBA is. Plus, they give you here 
it tells you, please make the call. You'll have a conversation. We'll grade it and give you the password. And then this is the assignment you'll submit. You'll go here and submit 1.09 discussion-based assignment with the following information, the date you talked and a summary of what you talked about. And I've told people that it's about three to four sentences. I don't need a book. And if you want to know how we grade it, you can click here, and there's a grading rubric on what we are grading when we talk to you. All righty? There we go. And I've told many of you, the more you talk and the less I have to talk, inherently the better grade you're going to get. Okay, so you see an email icon here. This is normally where your teacher sends their feedback for assignments. You're not going to get feedback for assignments in the first email box. You will get them here. Resetting assignments, grade book. All right? Announcement page. You can go back to the announcement page. I believe that's also the home page. You click it, you go right back to where I'm at. All righty. So far, so good, I'm hoping. So now let's look at another lesson that involves our good friend, the practice review test. So here I am at the beginning, and again, reading the information, okay, module checklist, I could click on it, print it out. Then it says caution. This contains two practice tests. One is a practice review test that is interactive. One is in the assessment area. The one that's interactive is in the lesson, not in the assessment area. You go to find it in the assessment area, you're not gonna see any of the pictures or understand what you're supposed to answer. So it's telling you right here, when you get to that, you're gonna have that issue. This is why it's important to read these things carefully. Now, as we keep going, it tells you about the pretest. So you're gonna take the pretest. Now, where am I gonna see that again? Let's say we get through the whole thing, go through all the modules, and I get to the end, and I have forgotten about the practice review test. Well, here, you're gonna see the notes, everything that was there, and if I'm reading the lesson pages, oh, here it is. Here is the practice review test. It's interactive. It's here, it's worth 10 points. It's gonna show up in your grade book, but you do it all here instead of in the assessments. When you finish, or and then you go down, it says, there are two assessments to complete. You've just done one, interactive above. Now do the assessment one. So there's one that's called a practice test and one that's called a practice review test. It may sound confusing, but please understand, they're labeled two different things so that you can figure out which one is which. All right? And then once you do that, it gives you that DBA page again and tells you what you're supposed to submit so you don't have to always remember, but you'll start to remember as you reference it. The idea is referencing is a way to remember. So the more you have to look stuff up, the more likely you are to remember it and not have to always look it up. Okay, so that is a lot of information. And real briefly, I'm going to mention collaborations. This is the part where a lot of people have been having a hard time. You're given opportunities to collaborate. You do not have to always collaborate. You only have to do it twice. Once in segment one, modules one through four. Once in segment two, modules five through eight. You only have to do one in each segment. So if you choose not to do any of the ones that are presented to you in the modules because you don't want to work with anybody else, you can do a live lesson with your teacher. And there'll be several opportunities to do that as well but you have to do one. You don't have to do them all, and you don't have to do more than one per segment. So you do one in segment one and one in segment two. Some of you have already fulfilled your segment one obligation, which is fantastic. You do not need to do another interactive. Now you may wanna show up to some of the live lessons, and that's why you downloaded Blackboard Collaborate, so that you could do live lessons with your teacher. Say you need a review, say you need help with your homework, say you wanna go, oh, everyone's going to study for module four test. Let me pop in there and see what that's like and do something with them. You still can, you just won't have to. Some people will have to go to the live lessons to meet their collaboration. Others, they'll just do it while they're in the thing. Please do not slow down, stop, or pause, or be ultimately confused with collaborations. We will deal with it as you guys keep moving through the software. So if you can do the first one because you've got a friend in your class and you want to do it, have at it. If you can't do the first one, do the individual assignment and submit it. 
and eventually you'll have the opportunity to do another one, or you can do a live lesson that will meet the collaboration needs. Alrighty, so I am hoping this makes everything as clear as mud. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sure you will have questions, and if you do, feel free to text us. So I'm going to go back to my home page again. You will see that I have a phone number and a text number. I respond to texts usually much faster than a phone number. But everybody is a little different. My cohorts that I work with, Ms. Puyat and Ms. Hall, they may be able to respond to texts and call from that same number. I just choose not to because um, my, I have an office number that travels with me, so I'm able to carry my office phone home with me, but I just can't receive texts on it, so I have a Google vo text just for text messages. All righty? Now that all that is so clear, I want to tell you thank you very much for taking the time to watch this, and please feel free to pause it and replay it or send it to anybody you wish. Thank you very, very much for your time, and you guys all have a wonderful day. I hope I answered or clarified many of your questions. Thank you very much, and good